yango meaning amafaranga money ubutunzi wealth buri mu mwijima wisi is within this dark world nigute ubutunzi bwacungurwa how can this wealth be redeemed you need to understand this you cannot be wealthy to be wealthy unless you go through these two ways the topic says understanding the satanic altars in the world of business hanyuma tukabisenya tukubaka ibicaniro by'Imana kugira ngo aho bucuruzi bu buteye imbere and then we destroy them and build godly altars for business success so that kingdom minded people may prosper hanyuma noneho tukagira abantu bafite imitekerereze y'ubwami so that we will give birth or we will train up kingdom minded people this is the topic I should be teaching you or speaking to you about because because so I requested for a PowerPoint and let's see if we can have it. It was prepared in English and we didn't have much time, I believe, uh, to put it in Kenya Rwanda. Unfortunately. So whatever I say, I think let's focus on that. It will be in Kinyarwanda in case what's on the board is in English. Amen. Amen. Anyway. Eh, kumenagura ibicaniro bya Satani kugira ngo twinjire mu gucungura ubutunzi bwa Africa destroying the satanic altar so we can get into the transformation or redemption of Africa financial redeeming financially nations Re for Africa redeeming African nations financially I want to tell you something briefly this is not just Africa this world as we were told is full of darkness unless we use the other prayer to say let your will and your kingdom come in the earth the world has been filled with darkness from the time Adam sinned Adam the first Adam he put the world in great darkness now the last Adam who is Jesus came as light the Bible says the light came to the world but the world did not comprehend it but those who comprehended the light he told them be light unto the world and also the salt of the earth amen amen meaning amafaranga money ubutunzi wealth buri mu mwijima wisi is within this dark world nigute ubutunzi bwacungurwa how can this wealth be redeemed you need to understand this you cannot be wealthy to be wealthy 
unless you go through these two ways either you are in satanism or you are in the kingdom of God without being in either one of those kingdoms you will never earn the wealth it's impossible this is why the world 79 percent are poor three percent they own the global wealth meaning 97% of the people in the world serve 3% so the ones that own the global wealth they are about 13 families only so who are you for you to attain that wealth for you to attain any wealth to have any money there is a partnership there is an agreement you have with the next person and you do business with the next person then you have the money so every wealth has its own agents so if you are of the satanic and dark wealth then you have your agents in that dark world so they will tell you let's sign the contracts so if you are of the light you also sign contracts with those who are enlightened but those of the light in other words those of Christ those who are Christians they are very few because they are not really supported by the world so those that understood this they called each other together so those who have understood this concept they do not care if you are from Vivant or Four Square or Zion no all they care is you are a Christian and you are a child of the light and you bring your brothers and sisters together so you can also have wealth or work together you partner because the people of the world do partnerships I had a lot to say to you because this is a business section but I will not scare you money does not come anyhow no it will not come when you dream about it or maybe when you work too hard to attain it money comes through networks you can, you can just connect or recommend someone and they have been working for so many years but just that one connection gets them to their wealth but which place are you being connected in the first place the king Ahazir he was the son of Ahab. He had a partnership with Jehoshaphat. He had a partnership with Jehoshaphat. Gukora business ya mato. To have a business of boats. Go baje bogereza mato muri Africa no muburaya. So they can send ships to Africa and to Asia. Donc icyo gihe bahita gatarushishi ni mu kegero za Mediterranean kweza muri Espagne, Maroc biri abice, Egypte, Maroc kuzamuka Tunisie. Donc na Espagne the, that, that's, at that time it was called Tarsis and that is at the border of Spain and Morocco 
bakora business so they were doing that kind of business ba investa mafaranga menshi they invested a lot of money ubwo atubugeze mu mazi when the ship got into the water burameneka it, it, it wrecked yoshafat arababara jehoshafat was furious mana ntangi chatu he said god i give my tithe singesha ba i pray with people yugu nakigaruye mu i have restore the nation to you kuchi business zanje zita why is my business not succeeding imutuma umuhanuzi so god sent a prophet to him ngo uwakoranye partnership numuntu tariwe and then the prophet told him that ahab you did had a partnership with the wrong person tinicho chatumye that is why you did not profit uriya korera satan that man serve satan we were on kore and you serve me tibzacha he can work kuko kugira ngo wibye bitere imbere hari ibitamba tamba for him to succeed or to attain wealth he has to do some sacrifice na kugira ngo utere imbere urantambira now for you to succeed in your business you offer to me as god habwo mwahuza rero ibitambo by'umwijima n'by'umucyo ngo bikora so you cannot bring together sacrifices of darkness and light and it will ever work si mfite umwanya wo kubabwira uko abantu bavuye mu bucuruzi bwa kera binjira mu mabank I don't have the time enough time to tell you how people left old fashioned business and got into the banking system. Wundi kera a long time amafaranga money tiyabagaho really paper money never existed. Tabagaho truck ukabufite ihene kaguhintama ukabufite intama kaguha inkoko donc mukayishanje mukareba valer there would be there would be trade happening and there would be in actual items there was no currency so what they would do there would be weights or scales that the jews called shekel shekel the shekel it was a weight that gave value to that item so how did the banks come Yes when no mugabo itaga Rothschild they were brought by a man called Rothschild Rothschild yari umuyuda umudage Rothschild was a German Jew igiheke niho batangiye gufata amabonde cyangwa donc batagira amabanke ya mabanke yose mubona So in his time that's when the banks started the ones that you see today aya mabanke mubona the banks you see na bakomoka they come from that man and his family you are a business muri yisi udakoranya na bank you would never do any business today without working with a bank tibishoboka not possible you udakoranya na bank so when you don't work with a bank baragushinja ngoko urakora money laundering they will accuse you for money for money laundering nikuvuga ngoko ura ura fraud amafaranga n'icya hagihanwa that's fraudulent it's a, it's a punishable law a uh, punishable sin by law mm uh amafaranga rero amaze kubaho so when currency came in place urumva ko buri gihugu every nation cyagombaga kugira amafaranga yayo was supposed to have its own currency ariko kugira ngo bamenye amafaranga y'u Rwanda amafaranga reka mvuga ibihugu biteye imbere kuko yacu yo ntantana cyane amafaranga y'ubudage amafaranga y'ubuyapani amafaranga y'abanyamerika eh baramenya guta gaciro kayo mugiye kuyakaba menye ama yuane ama japanese n'amanyamerika turayashanja gute turamenya ri hejuru ya yandi gute so currencies for example the american dollar the japanese yen or the money from germany for them to understand the exchange rate bakorera cha icyo bita gold na silver izahabu ni feza they would work it out using gold and silver nuko ngo izahabu na feza so silver and gold nizo zihesha gaciro amafaranga they are the value the ones that give value to currency commodities they are the ones that they give value to the different commodities so gold now the amount of gold a nation has nibyo bizana gaciro kamafaranga is what gives the value their currency ariko abanyamerika rero but the americans baje gukora deal 
They had a deal with certain great families to now give them their dollars now the American dollars you see they are not managed by the Central Bank of America Reserved Bank the Reserve Bank it is within a family so what did these people do they are the ones instead who print the dollars what did it give to them it managed to give them control over the economy of the world for the world's currencies to be great you, you value uh -huh. You value it not against gold as it used to be, but against the American dollar. Because they had an agreement. It was in the 1930s in Georgia, Atlanta. So in that time, dollar was a so the dollar became a great currency. I want to tell you. Don't imagine that you wake up one morning and you're wealthy. I want to show you the journey for you to become wealthy. No. What I'm telling you here today are concepts that you will never learn in business school. No, because in business school you learn economics, you learn business, you learn management. What management? The same concept set up by these people so you can manage their money. So this what I'm teaching you, they'll never teach you. However, I probably will need to focus on the subject of today. If you need to know more, maybe I'll get more time with you. No, pay. You need to pay. <laughs> okay. We were given by grace, we'll give, we'll, we receive by grace and give by grace. So whenever I ask you to pray for us, sometimes when I say, oh you hear people praying for Jitwaza all the time, you may not understand why we need those prayers, but just keep praying. My mandate and the purpose of my being here in this world is to destroy Satan's altars. That is what God called me. To do. And so that you will come get more understanding, so you will pray about it. In 1974. So many nations acquired gold. The American president at the time. Anyway, he was called Nixon. He said that uh, the American dollar will not be looked at best or valued based on gold. So it meant that the American dollar was there but with no value system. So what happened? Minister of the State Department. The minister or the State Department Why minister you here? at the time. He was kissing her, Henry. He was kissing her, Henry. In 1974. 1974. So he went in the Arabian countries, Arab countries. So they, 
So they had a deal the UAE that you see or Dubai it's not that They can destroy that in any time because it was an agreement with them. Dubai, Qatar, Dubai, Qatar, those are from the deals American cars. They built those cities. So what did they do? Barabu ya toke. Trasha kaku kuba kora muri ubu kene utudugu tukosi tukwa barabu. We want to get all these Arab countries out of poverty. Za Moskate, Qatar, Dubai, Riyadh, Abu Dhabi. All the different Emirates, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Muscat. We now, however, will sign to do what they call petrodollar. This is a deal that was signed by Kissinger. And he said, from today, we will make your petrol great in the world. However, but its value will be valued in dollars. So the petrol that will be sold kibazo cha president si kibazo cha cha ba ministres no iyo hatari dollar ibintu birahinduka mu So the oil will be sold on the market will be based on the dollar and that is why knowing very well that our nation's currency are based on the dollar that is why when we don't have enough dollars our fuel will go up and down so all that they were selling the oil products were all based on the dollar that would fluctuate. So what is petrodollar? Yari yari hindu ye gold dollar. Now it was taking over replacing the gold dollar deal. Ariko basinya dire y'imyaka 50. And they signed a deal of 50 years. Niko mu bubatse Dubai. And that's how they built Dubai. Uyu munsi ndimo mvugana na. As we speak right now. Imyaka 50 yarangi. 50 years have come to an end. Abarabu. Arabs. Banze kure nouvelle contre. They have refused to renew the agreement. So now Putin is in the play. China and China is there. Brazil, and Brazil South Africa, South Africa India, India is there. Now the agreement of the petrodollar is now over. So now let's have our own currency that will go against the dollar. What you hear, BRICS. Brazil, Brazil, Russia, Russia, India, India, South Africa, South Africa Sinani, uh, China, China, South Africa, and South Africa. They coalesced. They, they, they had a coalition. But five of them. Tugwanye. Let's fight. Dollar. The dollar. Aba Arabu. The Arabs. Please don't renew that contract. Uredis. Now the world. If it kills has a problem. You know where it's going? Back, silver and the gold. Back to gold and silver in that old time. So now you want to do tread. Think silver na gold. Tread in silver and gold again. Anyway. It's a bit of a hint. There are many scenarios at play. That is why there is the cryptocurrency. This is, this is volatile currency. It is not tangible. People are in speculation financially. In these times. But this is the time. Imana yifuza. 
And this is, uh, as you hear, the Bible says that the glory of the latter house. Gold and silver. In Hagar, he says, Gold and silver is mine. I will shake the world. Meaning that God wants to restore gold and silver back to the church. Now the problem the church has is what uh, he taught, the mindset of Christians. This is how Christians are. Because you're not trained in the values and principles of the kingdom. When you get a lot of money, now you learn to drink wine. You learn to put on all kinds of jewelry. Now you're immature. Money is going, making you crazy. You stay in a hotel and you call for prostitutes. You have money but no kingdom mindset. That is what he emphasized on. I will not dwell too long because anyway, he already Now let's go to the altar. Let me know how much time I have. Amen. Amen. Simbachi integum and Muzaki. Mufi to be promised in Shicha. I'm not discouraging you that you not get wealthy. There are no. so many promises. Muzakir. You'll be wealthy. But you need to have a kingdom mindset. I'm going to uh, teach from Judges 6 1 to 6. Abisrayeli bakora ibyangwa no witeka uwiteka abahana mu maboko aba Midian imyaka irindwi. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midians for 7 years. Nuko aba Midian banesha Abisrayeli batera Abisrayeli gushaka ho kwishisha mu bihana manga byo mu misozi no mu mavumo no mu bihome. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites. The children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was whenever Israel had sown, had sown, Midianites would come up, also Amalekites, and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither their sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents coming in an in as numerous as locusts, both they and their camels without number, and they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Brethren, you have my note. Now you can read my note. Ibihugu bya Africa bigize imyaka myinshi bica mu ntambara mu miryane mu ndwara no mu bukene bukabije. Nations of Africa have over the years continued to experience war strife, diseases and severe poverty. World Bank, Bank EC, IMF, Bretton Wood, World Bank, So they 
all these international organizations, the World Bank, the United Nations, the IMF, the ones that we talked about, those were just put to manage what they call the Britain Hood, where they had their own agreements. Hey, zitarafashiye cyane ahubwo zazanye ruswa nyinshi no bukene bwinshi mu bantu no gukora ibintu bidakwiriye ndetse no kongera nk'indi gwara nkaza sida nibindi bintu byinshi byateye Africa so in certain cases help has resulted or resulted in increased corruption poor service delivery and ever expanding hiv pandemic all sorts of reasons have been provided as to why Africa finds itself in this situation mm. Ibyo ngiye kubaganiriza aho gatoya ntabwo ari uguhinyura ibyo bakora cyangwa de bakuri ibyo ariko gusa ni ukugira ngo mbabwire ibyo nemera ngewe bimwe mu bibazo Afrika ifite uyu munsi ndetse ko bikomoka mu mirage y'uyu mugabane ibyo abantu bagiye baragwa so the summon is not an attempt to debate or critique the reasons presented by this organization but an attempt to provide an alternative framework to examine the ills of Africa yeah eh kandi nkavuga ko mu byukuri si ntabwo nsabira imbabazi kuvuga ko bibiliya ifite igisubizo cy'ibintu it is my firm belief that africa's problem are rooted in the spiritual heritage of the continent i therefore make no apologies for using the bible to provide us with an alternative analytical framework ko analiza ibibazo biri muri muri africa to analyze africa's problems imana mu bugari bwayo mu bwenge bwayo yagi yafashe igihugu cya Israel ikigira ngigikoresho tugomba kwigiraho so god in his infinite wisdom chose the nation of israel to be the instrument through which he was going to bless other nations iyo mubonye mu itangiriro 12 wa bibiliya ngo nzakugira umugisha uzaho umugisha uzaba bya byo simani bwira abraham no kugira ngo tubirebereho ku imana yifuza ko abantu bagira umugisha when you look at genesis 12 where god is saying to abraham i will bless you be a blessing to many it is an indication that we too can partake of that blessing dero iyo dusubije when we go to the Old Testament, we see Israelites. What they wrote, what God talked, talked stayed unto them. So they are to become a prototype so that we can learn from them. If you look at 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6 kugira ngo bitubera kabarore ngo tutifuze ibi nkuko bawo bavyifusha inicyo cyaba cyabizanye First Corinthians uh, 10 verse 6 says Now this Now these things become our examples to the intent that we should not last after evil things as they are they also lasted Ibyo byabereye ko tubera ku murongo wa 11 naho ngo kabarore kandi byandikiwe kuduhugura verse 11 now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the Aba, ends of the ages have come so many people believe the old testament is way past no it is there as a lesson an example for us to learn from the past so when we learn how god walked with the people how he punished them how he loved them it is an example for us today to learn Romans 15 4 says all that was written were written for us to learn from them they were written so we will learn from them so in the old testament israel became a prototype or a modern nation by which we could see how we too can live with our god even jesus when he gave that responsibility we see this in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nuko Yes, sir. 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 So in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, which is Christ's great commission to us, he says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth to go, go thereof and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you. Now this means that we have to now look at what they were teaching, and then we will emulate it. So I would like us to speak briefly about an altar what is it? how are altars formed what are the consequences of a national individual family community altar what are the steps that people have to use nations have to use to destroy these altars now I will not just speak as the church but you as business people you business person you want to take that hidden currency that wealth that is hidden you. you know what God spoke to Cyrus that I will give and I will give you hidden treasures. When Cyrus attained it, for him, not, for him not to be killed when he found the wealth, he said, Please use it to build the house of the Lord. That is why God called Cyrus his servant. When you have wealth and you don't use it to build the house of God, it will destroy you both physically, spiritually. You don't use the wealth God gave you to build the kingdom of God. It will destroy you. Unless, if you sign a covenant with the devil or in hell, but they also will give you a timeline and that too will destroy you. You should read a book by a man called Emmanuel Eli. He's from Nigeria. He was delivered from the power of darkness. Yeah. So Emmanuel Eli wrote a book by the title Deliverance from the Power of Darkness and this is a young man when he was young he served the kingdom of darkness he was able to go to hell and see in hell there is great factories that print money and then he writes all about that Why do people buy people die prematurely When people say that they offered him as a sacrifice what does that mean they actually don't die. Because people die prematurely and normally as sacrifices and when such a person dies like that they don't Physic they physically die you may bury them in the cemetery but they have gone to hell and they are only serving the dark system of the world okay so how do we destroy those old and how will God answer us or how will God respond when we destroy them and what will the 21st century church do what is an altar how are they built Unfortunately, I don't know why internet and Janze Gukora. You're not in it. Okay, the commission be a mucho and Gazan with Teguriemo, I condize a comrie. 
Uh, okay, thank you, Mutawazi. You sent me something. I'm trying to see. What are altars? Yeah. Okay. Accept good. Thank you. Ndabi boy. Kora na wo hangari te yugo busu bundi buno zibo. Havi nyo herejari hari yambana viraje. Atari no muri email. Mumura girangwa isiri mitu jana. Technology is amazing. I managed to get my teaching. Thank you. Igichani Roniki. What's an altar? When you speak of altars, many are taken back in the time of Noah. But there were altars before then. Because Abel sacrifice to the Lord on an altar. Even Cain had an altar. But more specifically, the Bible starts with Noah's altar as the main one in the Bible. And we see this in Genesis 8.20. Noah yubakira uwiteka igicaniro. Atoranya mu matungo yose no munyamaswa zose zitariza zitazira no munyo nibisiga tambira kuri cyo gicaniro ibitambo byoswa Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird offered burnt offerings on the altar Amen Amen Noah yubaka igicaniro Noah built an altar Yaravuye mu nkuge He had come from the ark Muri bwa bwato in the earth the first thing he did he built an altar and offered to the Lord so an altar has a specific way it's built there is a, an altar that is built devoted to a dainty so all the altars that you see that are worshipping idols in Judges 6, 1 and all the different uh, uh, altars that are set up to worship Satan. Now when we say praying to idols it is related to divination, it is related to witchcraft, it is related to devil worship. So it is a place, an altar, where prayers are uh, given to a dainty and whatever they call their God. So anytime people are in idol worship, they encounter great problems. They encounter lots of wars. So if we go to Judges 6:25, Bible says that now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him take your father's young bull the second bull of seven years old and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden image that is beside it so we see that an altar is something that is built so that you can sacrifice and you have a relationship or worship with another deity. The wealthy of this world today among them is Indians. But also the nation with the biggest number of poor people is India. So why is that? 
uwakuye amafaranga ikuzimu bakubuza kuyafasha abantu ngo badevelop kuko iki kintu gituma cyonyine umuntu wenyine wemera ko waha undi munda kabaho na waki develop ni imana so many times the people that serve satan their wealth is strictly not to bless others to develop why because only god with the with the heart of love will give them a heart to to share their wealth with others so those who get their money from satanic worship cannot use it to transform others lives you find wealthy people that got their money from hell their nephews and nieces their mothers their family relatives they are so poor but this specific one person is wealthy now these children will be sent out of school for lack of tuition and he is not bothered but when one of them dies the this wealthy relative will show up with all the money that's needed for the funeral but while this person was alive they were not willing to help them in any way so this is not the kind of wealth that comes from God. Dr. Vincent, Professor Vincent. Professor Vincent told us one day. one person in Nigeria. Went to the hospital. They were dead they were in a critical condition and they were healed so they gave them a bill hospital bill and he said i don't have money for this in some hospital they will keep the patient in the hospital until they pay the bill he said do not keep me here but i want you to do me a favor send a death announcement and say I'm dead and then he said uh, uh, please give a death announcement to my relatives let them know but however when they come make sure they cannot take my body until they clear the bill but also over bill so that I can get a balance after you pay your bill when the death announcement passed the radio there were, there were four wheel drives coming Benzes came our person just died why didn't you tell us they were sick he said sorry they are dead give us the body this is the hospital bill fast so they paid quickly well let's go to the mortuary where is the dead body when they opened the mortuary and the man was walking alive they were furious they almost killed him you are alive after all every person angry, drove off almost killing him they were not happy that he may have resurrected anyway don't have such people they don't help you while you still need the help but when someone dies they are all there to help do you know such people? <laughs> so that money, we have to have our doubts about it. It will never help the people while they're still alive when they're in need, but it's ready to help when it's over. <laughs> the satanic wealth has conditions in Kinshasa in Kinshasa the, 
Franco. Uh, there, were a there was a place where the people of Franco would be. Oh, he was a musician in Congo. He was called Luango Matiadi Franco. I'm sure you know that song and many others. I will not talk about the musician at the time, but he was there. He had signed a pact with the devil. We will give you greatness and wealth. However, never sleep in the night sleep during the day and move through the night that's when you can work go to the different bars in Kinshasa and use all the money that we give you and enjoy yourself so there was a bar it had a sign in front of it where a person would enter with pockets full of money and then this is a sign first a person gets into the bar full of money and then there is another sign that says when you exit your empty pocket So that bar had also a pact with the devil and the idea was that all the people that devil had given money they were instructed to go and spend the money in that bar. If you went there it was the worst of the worst but people still went there. I have time. No, Narangiza Trezer Sasaba. Eh? Narangiza. Mui hanga anembigishe. Nizuzo mapano seko. Ama pano se ni pano ki mureke mbigishe. Don't intimidate me mureke ndangi. Allow me to teach you, please. Yeah. Ndabi iziko mushaka pano kwa zi viva zo. Ariko na hachumu. Mureke tukuigi. Let's learn. Let's learn. Amen. Amen. Eh, since I want to ring it, I want to land this trip. Never go to my altars. Never go to the altar. Yeah. Bero, igi chani roni kini chotu wa vugaga kuhie chanoa bagi chizeho. We were talking about the the altar and referring to the first altar of Noah. Iki nuchambere tuiga nuko igi chani ro gi ari ari mana changwe se akamana kigirwa mana chuo kirwa. We learn that it's built for a dainty or an idol. Iki ni nacho gicha ni niwa ba nuba senga rakani waga tanga yo ibi mazi changu sibi tambo kuri choki girwa man changu iman. So in that altar, that's where people will pray and also offer their sacrifices. Niwa mwa somiari ya kugicha ni rochano wa wa somi. Where we read. Go yuba kiru ite kigicha ni ro. Urumva ko igicha ni rochuba kirwa. Uiteka changwe se yindi mana. Where we read. Where we read that Noah built an altar unto the Lord. So this altar is built for someone. Chuba kirwa ni kirwa mana. It's built for an idol sometimes. Mwabonye au gidioni. Tuwa asomi wacha amanza katana na makumi abili na katanu. Aho imana ya mubu yengo Agenda senye igicha ni nochuba kiwe baali We also read in Judges 6.25 Where God told Gideon to go and build an altar And sorry before building the altar Destroy the father's altar that he had built And then build his He needed to destroy the altar of Baal Ateme na Ashera yari hafi yacho And to destroy Asher who was near there and we see that in 1 Corinthians 12 2 
you know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols however you were led murabizi ko ibicaniro iyo muri cyo gicaniro harumuka wihishe afete ni ukuyobora so in that you tangiye kwinjira mu bitambo mu cyaniro tubuka ikiyoboye wa mwuka watambiye ni ukubwira hurara aho wirigwa aho korera icyo zanwa icyo cyo donc donc ngo mwayoborwaga so you are we were being led while you are still gentile so in every altar there is a spirit that leads you and directs your life you know that when you were pagans somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols don't you were influenced there is influence you are under influence don't the post delivery man or the mailman is not the problem it is the one that has actually sent that so don't look at people and say that person bewitches me it is they are serving something greater anyway, than themselves I not dwell too long on that so the spiritual realm is complicated. There is no one God will ever allow that they bewitch you unless you're related. So it is never it never happens that God will allow anybody because he normally has genetic codes that are rela that are supposed to be only known by the relative of yours. So no one from the outside can ever bewitch you. It has to be someone you're related to. Amen. That is why when God was revealing himself to Gideon, he said, firstly, destroy your father's altar, the altar of Baal. Mi famille. He is related to the Father. That is why God redeemed us. He had to first have our DNA and be born in us. And became our brother. He had to have our DNA. And then we had a blood transfusion and got his blood into ours. God God could not redeem us while in heaven. No, he needed to have, he needed to become man like us and be part of our DNA. And that is the only way he could redeem us. And that's why anybody that bewitches you has to be related to you. Are we together, brethren? Amen. 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 So at the altar, God will respond. Or, or whichever idol you're praying to will respond in some way. In Genesis 8, 21. Don't get Covenant. In Genesis 8:21, and the Lord smelt a soothing aroma. So they was a covenant because the Lord responded to it. So an altar can be built so that you will be blessed. And we see this in Genesis 12:8. Abraham avayo a a a a a shingi gichani liyamba zizi na juu iteka. And Abraham built an altar and called unto the Lord. Gichani ugishora na no ne kuba kwa kugerengo kivume ishanga. Also, it may be built an altar to curse a nation. Kuvuma bantu. Cursing a nation. Do three modu kora deliverance yuruanda. When we were delivering the nation of Rwanda, 
twari tugiye gusenga muri stade hari muri 1999 we were praying in the stadium in 1999 imana yaravuze ngo stop god said stop there mwanze mugiyene musenye ikigirwa mana kiri hari ya kaciru cyari cyarazanywe n'abanye giputa sinzi ko mukibuka yari monima ati ntimuje muri stade gusaba imbabazi mutaragisenye niyo twakitronza turagisenye so, ambasade ya Egypt iraza yiruka bari barazanye ikintu cyo ngo ni imana ra imana ra yaje mbere gatoya genocide iraba so when we were going to, when we had a deliverance uh, conference at the stadium god told us to stop and fast it was a conference for repentance for the nation and then god said we needed to fast stop and go and destroy the statue which was in kachiru and it was an idol or a, a memorial uh, that was given to rwanda it was a god ra. goddess ra. it was a goddess ra given to rwanda and at that time when we destroyed it the egyptian embassy was furious about that they were angry but we destroyed it. You remember that? Those things were not easy. It wasn't easy for us at the time. But there was no choice for the nation to be delivered. Numbers 22, verse 5. Atuminduma kuri Balaamu mwene Beori kuruzi kwa Efrati titi ngodore hari wabano wavuye mre Egiputa baji magiji giugu chose barante barante gereji nukonda kwe ingi inze kumurongu waga tandu mguinu mvumira wabandu then, <laughs> then he sent messengers to Balaam the son of Bor at Petho which is near the river in the land of the sons uh, in the land of the sons of of Mutamia, river ni Ephrates. this is river Euphrates and verse 6 therefore please come at once cast these people for me verse uh, chapter 23 numbers listen here carefully Oh, time of Italia. Deba. Nani. Kuba Makumabri Nagatat. Numbers twenty-three. Doruko Didimes. This is how it is. Avisrail Banaj. The Israelites are approaching. Umnami we moab. The king of Moab. Balaki mwene peor. Ba Barak the son of Peor. Amenyakwababan Oba Chio was a kubarakubit. He knew that anywhere the Israelites got to, they destroyed. And they are approaching. So he sent people to Iraq in Mesopotamia to bring a great sorcerer called Balaam. Come and cast these people for me. This entire nation okay. needs to be cast. So verse uh, chapter 23. Verse 1. Balaam said to Then Balaam said to Balak, build seven altars for me here. Ikindi unyite gureono amafiza rindwi and prepare for me seven bulls and seven rams seven altars seven bulls and seven rams so that he will cast the people of God Niko exactema aba aba sataniste wa fatumuji buba kibicha nilubirindu mungune zimiji that is how satanists take over a city they build seven altars around it things are happening in the city unusual things and you're wondering why no you're fighting against certain altars uh, an altar can be a physical one like Abraham and Noah did but it also be, it could be spiritual Imagine 
If you remember in Romans 12, 1 to 3, he said, I beseech you, brethren, offer your bodies as living sacrifices unto the Lord. As they sacrifice to the demons, as they sacrifice to Satan, let your bodies be living sacrifices. Okay. Altars devote to idols can only generate curses. So every altar that was was that is set up by Satan always brings a curse. Now these idols could take the form of ancestral spirits, they can be principalities or demons. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 33. 2 Chronicles 33. 5 to 7. 5 to 7. Kandi uyu yari yari umwami wa Israeli witwa Gamanase Manase muramuzi uyu ni umwana wavuye mu masengesho yari yarabzawe nande na Hezekiah yasavye imana ko imwongera imyaka 15 eh here it talks about yeah. Manase the, the son of Hezekiah who had prayed to God to uh, lengthen his wife life more for 15 years ahabzara muhungu witwa Manase and then he had this son called Manase ngo yubakira ngo ingabo zo mu ijuru zose ibicaniro mu bikari byombi by'inzu y'uwiteka ingabo zo mu ijuru na madayimoni abizana mu mugikari cy'inzu y'Imana verse 5 33 second chronicles 33:5 okay 33 uh, 33 second uh, chronicles he says, and he built altars for all the hosts of the heavens in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of the, of the son of Hinnom. He practiced with saying, used witchcraft and, and sorcery and consulted medians and spirits. He did so much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Verse 7. And the other thing he did was to set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel, I'll put my forever. Many churches have idols in them. And that is why a lot is not working out. So after all this, so what happened? Israel was uh, captured and taken over by the Midianites. What are Midianites? They mean conflict. Nation is delivered. You have. What are, what are the consequences for a nation, a community, a family? What are the consequences of a nation, communities, or families that have got wrong altars? Ichambere igoshanga ichogihugu iyonzu wabobaan vahitaba jamusi yamaboko yamaboko yichoki bategets. So the consequences is that such a nation is delivered to people like the Midianites and people who will oppress them. So now in this context it's the Midianites. What does the, the word Midian mean? It means strife. Yeah. So median means strife. It is a state of contention. You're with people, you pray, yes, but you're always in conflict. Husband and wife. Abanda. Children, you get ready to pray. Mm. 
So you're getting ready to pray as a family. You are actually on your way to church, but no one is talking to the other. There has been strife somehow. The spirit of strife is in you. Can you know we get? Shachangu ni ni uyo bora. Shachangu se ni we mugi jambari kumwe. Hama midia ni nzwa kabat sinda pe mumbi. Chakora imani hishawa ndo ni mutanga zahiruria biga chamari kubundi. The spirit of strife is or in the media nights are in you when you feel like that or something happens to you. Believe it or not, sometimes this happens to you when you're the moderator of the service, you're the preacher, but somehow the Lord will cover you and you go through it. Umurongo ambere kureza kwa gata na tungo baraba nesha. Now verse 1 to 6 he says they overcame them. So they defeated them completely. They were powerless. When someone has a habit they become enslaved by it. They don't let go of it. Any sin that has enslaved you. Don't you don't let go of it. So this is the state where you have been fully oppressed by the Midianite. This sin cannot leave you. You try your best and say this time round I will not do it but it still comes about. So what we see when you have such an altar, you are under oppression by others. Your family is taken care of by other men and you are a man in your house. I was watching a film like this, a man in a house, and he was like, he was like, he there is a there is a movie called Nuko harabandi bagutegekera. So when there is such a satanic altar in your home or you have been invaded by such an altar, that means other people will take over your life and they will oppress you. They will rule you. They will rule over your life. The second consequence urebye kuri biriya bya bya Gideon. When you look at the story of Gideon, igihugu cyose cyari we could see that at that time the entire nation was under total defeat and fear. Mm. So when in your family there are those satanic altars, they will be fighting against you and they put you in a, in a state of total defeat and fear. So anytime you want to go into a business, you're always thinking about what are the risks, what if I make a loss. Any people in business will make a loss, so you should be able to go, but that spirit and that altar will pull you back. Bill Gates get angiza Microsoft. When Bill Gates started Microsoft, there were three men who were his friends. There were three men who were his friends. So they asked them to invest in Microsoft. They were three men who were his friends. So they asked them to invest in Microsoft. Babiri, two of them, were investors. They invested. And now they said, "The little money I have, I don't want it to lose, get lost in this." Mwanza mukore turebe. You first do the business, I'll see how it works out. So they worked and it was good. They became wealthy people. Now their friends stayed poor. When I was in America, I had a conference. So they, they gave me a man uh, to be my protocol. 
Then this man said, before I take you to your hotel, may I take you somewhere fast? Diego. I said, it's okay. So we drove. We went into a house. He had a cord. And the gates opened. And he drove into that place. A great mansion. Then he turned around. And we are, mm. I said, where is this? He said, I'll let you know shortly. So he took me to another place. That is how it was. So we returned. Took me back to the hotel. And he cried. He said, pray for me. I have lost. I, I ha don't get me. Uh, pray for me I have a cast I lose stuff anytime I do something I have a generational cast of losing things did you see the two mansions those are my good friends some of them I would help them with money before but when the Microsoft project came they were bold enough to invest they are millionaires when however I show you where I stay you will be amazed till today he is a poor man in America and his friends are wealthy now what made that happen it was the altar in his family that hindered, hinders him from moving beyond the boundaries that the altar put them in so I had a talk with him and the grandmother was a sorcerer <laughs> the father did the same devil worship he encountered problems so people are, are overpowered by a spirit of fear that they do not want to invest so they can be in business another consequence these kind of people they live lives they are in, always in hiding not aligned to the purpose of God for their lives and the Midianites overcame them and they would go and hide in the dens number four these kind of people a nation of people that have got satanic altars they work very hard but reap nothing we read that in this is in so whenever the Israelites had worked and had sown the Midianites would come up against them and also the Amalekites and the people of the east would come and they would destroy the produce that they had so this is the same with you with the altars in your family you work so hard you attain you are looking towards attaining something but you do not know what happens the spirit of the devourer is against you also and then you find that such a nation with satanic altars will live in perverse poverty and this is in uh, Judges 6 6 so the Israelites were greatly impoverished because of the Midianites 
they were greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. Very smart. Their people you see outwardly they are smart people they seem to know what they are doing unfortunately they are not able to do anything for themselves they only serve others and others get profit they do not get it. our brother told us about it all the wealthy people you see TVs. many of them didn't go to school now you who are highly educated you serve them they will come and insult you anyhow they want you have all the kinds of certificates and diplomas but guess what you are not their boss they are your boss I'm not I'm not I'm not discouraging you. I'm not discouraging you not to go to school, but just know that the education system, unfortunately, was put in place by the people that want you to serve them. So it teaches you to do that. Look at most of the wealthy people. They didn't have to study so much to be wealthy. You are an engineer, a great engineer, but you are only doing bricks and building people's houses while they are sleeping. You are the ones doing the hard labor. I'm a pilot. Mm -hmm. I'm a pilot. You're simply a driver in the air for someone else's plane. So the Your father in heaven, do you think they designed you so that you just drive people for all your life? No. You are designed for something greater. <laughs> anyway. Doctors. You come to the doctor, they will touch your body, even those places that you, you too do not want to touch. They are touching all those disgusting things. But remember, he's educated, but doing all that, and you too can't even. When you go to school, you go to school to learn to serve others, but you don't go to school to do that profession to be wealthy. No, that is not how it is. Education. Mm -hmm. education is not meant to give you wealth no it is for you to serve wealth is attained in other ways we have different kinds of pastors now we have two kinds of pastors those that are called as shepherds I'm supposed to serve the Christians and it stops at that there are other pastors however who yes serve the Christians but they know that in the church they are able to attain wealth and they uh -uh. Uh -uh. They are pastors. They serve or put up a church and they want to be wealthy. We don't get wealthy in a church. That is where, however, that's where we serve. Wealth is outside the church. Uh, in, Sometimes 
So as a pastor, you are given a charge, a marine, you have the water, the pilot has the air, they, they, they take the airplane, but your wealth is not in the church, it's outside. Brethren. So this is how the Midianites were. They plundered everything from the Israelites because of the altars. So God wants to bless you. But what you need to do is remove the wrong altars from your house. And then you learn the principles of the kingdom. And God will connect you with the people of the kingdom. The day uh, Mary got conceived, the angel connected her to who? To Elizabeth. Now, two pastors need to be in partnership. God is a God of partnerships. Whenever your purposes are connected, He will connect you. Amen. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 Without further ado, I'm about to finish. Let's look at the example of Gideon. 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 He's an Israelite. They are encountering problems. But what happened to the altars? Now we see that Gideon happens to be in a, in a place he shouldn't be in and a lot of fear. He's in great fear. He is in the wrong place. Mm. Out of fear. Iyo haribi nwikuboshi igecho se wisanga urahano adakwiri Anytime Anytime you are wrong place. So when God, for example, will give you a church like this that are meant to mentor you and usher you and deploy you into the world to be of a person of value, but you decide to wander in different churches, you miss the opportunity to be trained into what the Lord has purpose for you. If we go to Judges 6.11, mm. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree from uh, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abzerite, which while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. Already it is an, a problem. The angel is coming to meet Gideon under a tree and then Gideon is threshing wheat and this is exactly the wrong place he should be. Threshing wheat where? He's, he's threshing wheat in the wine press. Yes, wine press. Wrong place. Because the wrong Many of us, we do not get blessed. Why? Because we are threshing wheat in the wine press. Wrong place. Maybe you were meant to be a mayor of a city, but now you are only a mechanic in Nyabugogo. So, so the angel of the Lord is going to come to the garage. Who's supposed to instruct you about what you need to do as a mayor? Now, he was coming under this tree. That is not where he should have come. Now, 
bavuke mu masezerano ariko yageza ahantu aravuga ngo ariko ya masezerano waravuga niyo siyo ibyo mwene data yatubwiraga and the other thing that shows Gideon he was struggling with unbelief he never trusted in the promises of God anymore anymore wahabonye he does not believe he doesn't have yeah. he, he has in God's promises anymore abachamanza 16 gatandatu 12 gatandatu niyo turi ku mugice cya gatandatu maraika uwiteka ngo aramubonekera amubwira ati uwiteka ari kumwe na wa munyambaragawe ugira no gutwara yemusubije gute and the angel of the lord appeared to him and said the lord is with you you mighty man of valor what did he answer ngo uwiteka ngo niburiwe koko ngo niki gituma ibyo zose bitubaho ni mirimo yose itangaza iri hehe ngo iyo wakoze basokuruza batubwiraga ngo uwiteka na dukwe mu giputa Arimara bwira marayika. Urumva eta yararimo. This is the iyo byakujengereza ibicaniro. Uraza wabona abantu baritera bararirimba ngo ariko bari bararirimba iki buri aba basekiki. Amase aka ka message karamfasha akahe. Ziya ndirimbo zira ntakiki gufasha. Kwe ibicaniro yakuremereye. So when the altars overpour you like Gideon he said oh my lord if the lord is with us why then has this happened to us and where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about saying did not the lord bring us up from egypt but now the lord has forsaken us so in other words this is a state of mind for a person under the bondage of an altar when you see good things happening you wonder why people are excited because it does not touch your emotions the other thing that was evident on Gideon, just like all the Israelites, was impoverishedness. What's amazing, though, what's amazing, and you not believe it, poverty is associated with punishment, it is associated with disobedience. So poverty always comes with all these other things. Ubukene. poverty Udashira. you are in perverse poverty always so what did they do they cried unto the lord so the intercessors came to pray you will never progress in your business or succeed if you don't pray you need to be an intercessor pray for others but when it comes to you don't pray for wealth ask God is there an altar hindering you now when you destroy that altar everything will come easily so what happens when they cried out to the Lord the first thing God did he, called, he sent to them a prophet to, to, tell, to speak to them and give them a solution you will see that in Judges 6, 9, 10 the other thing now when the prophet left the angel of the Lord came now after the prophet the angel of the Lord came sometimes they don't they're not clear they say the angel of the Lord or a messenger the first way God would deliver his people he always sends a prophet they were impoverished God sent a prophet then he sent his angel the third thing God did Gideon was still having unbelief in him even if the prophet had come and the angel of the Lord came there are things I still don't trust and believe God definitely forgot us he was accusing them of of rejecting them. Imana 
tigeze guhemba umugore ni irari ryawe namaso yawe yamurebye uko bisi mirundi uko bisi ububoga ruburebure ngo nuriya Every time you are in the wrong place or you happen to be with the wrong person, for example, you get married to the wrong woman or man and they give you a hard time, don't complain and say, Oh God, why would you let this happen to me? Remember, it was your last and your will to do that. So this is what Gideon said. In 613. Mm -hmm. Ariko none uwiteka yaradutaye yatugabije mu midiane. Ninde wo ninde wabaye umunyamafuta anga. Avuga ngo ni imana yabataye yabagize. Ariko nibikirwa imana bafite bari ryamye mwabo munzu. Asheriri ruhande rwaye. Bagira ngo imana igehe. Wikururi ibibazo none kuri ihane imana igutunganira isibintu. So in this time Gideon is complaining and saying oh my god if the Lord is with us why then has all this happened to us and where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about saying did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites now he's complaining but he doesn't realize it is the altar the satanic altars that they need to first destroy but God is not man he loves us and he's compassionate. Even if we accuse him falsely, he told Gideon, fear not, I will be with you. Hmm. So despite your predicament, you might be in that wrong marriage, you might have made that wrong decision, the Lord is comforting you and saying, I am with you even if you go through the darkness, even if you go through the waters, I will be with you. So God is compassionate and will still take you through. And then the Lord says, Go in this might of yours, you shall save Israel. It is I who has sent you. Hmm. So still Gideon is complaining and saying, but you know my, my clan is the least in this tribe. So he's finding excuses for not doing God's mandate. That's what happens to us. You are always even when the Lord blesses you, you find a reason for not doing what you should do. You're wearing clothes, you have so many, but you do not want to do what the Lord has sent <inaudible> you. You are not yet aware that the Lord has blessed you. <inaudible> Even you who are wealthy, you are not even aware that you are. You are when you are an impoverished person or when you have that mentality or that generational curse, it's not easy to overcome it. You may have a lot that you want to be in abundance, but you're holding on to the little. There is a family. They were wealthy but used to be poor. When you have a poverty mentality, you can have abundant things, but you still want to be poor. So for example, this mother or this family, they used to be poor and then now they had all they needed, but if the children wanted to eat like a lot of meat, they would say, don't think these are mushrooms, you don't need to eat all, just a little bit. Why? She still has the poverty mentality in her. So God told Gideon, we're still together. Right then, then he built an altar. 
Jehovah Shalom. And he called it Jehovah Shalom. That was his peace. God did not accept that altar though. First go and destroy Baal. Do not have peace and comfort when you still have an altar in your house. Destroy it first and destroy Asher and then I'll accept your altar. That is why he, then he destroyed Baal. Amen. Amen. When the Lord gives you wealth, it may be short lived if you still have an altar of Baal in your household. You need to first destroy it. Destroy the altar of jealous, destroy the altar of, of hatred, and then you can have lasting wealth. Otherwise, it will be short lived. So, what did he do? He destroyed the altar. And then they told the father. And the father defended him. And then he said, if Baal is God, he should speak for himself. Now the man who was uh, sowing wheat, threshing, threshing. threshing wheat, he thought that was his profession to sell flour in the neighborhood. But he was meant to be the leader of Israel. So he arose and sent out the Midianites and he became a great judge. When the altar is destroyed, you become the person God has destined you to be. Your business, it's you who will build churches. In your business, you send out missionaries and sponsor them. In your business, churches will build great institutions. Also, we are not waiting for anyone else. It's you. Until you destroy the altar, then you can do it. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Please arise and let us pray. You get time to ask all the other people in the upcoming sessions. Amen. 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 Hariho ibyiza gusa ha bineze zezu amfitiye amfitiye byinshi mukiganza kiwe oh We thank you, God. We destroy every altar in our families, in our workplaces, where we work from, where we stay, where we live, in the nation. We destroy all those altars in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, give us your wisdom. Give 
ibitekerezo bya tuye gukomera kuva ku tugeze mu rundi rwe mu izina rya ku mugishira itorero bless this church bene data baje brethren who are here bari mu biga that are learning mana izinyi nyicyo zibanze these are foundational teachings zibinjiriza mwami muri za business bazako they will take them into greater teachings of business kugira imitekerezo y'ubwami to have a kingdom mindset no gusenya bicani and to destroy all things then the others will come to pass the glory is yours in the name of jesus amen amen